the endurance, drive, stimulate, and spirit, encourage, envision, growth, activate, motivate. Nearly two years ago, when I was just short of being a 13-year-old, I was on a televised trivia show that brought together some of the most conceited high school students onto one stage. At the time, my teammate and I had just won our quarterfinal round. When we heard the team we had just won against say the words, I can't believe we lost to girls. And as I'm on a bus ride home, I think of how time and time again, I find the same scene, that a lack of a Y chromosome always gets my opposition grinding their teeth. They often find that nothing is more embarrassing than losing to a girl, but I disagree. What's really embarrassing is upholding these exhausted notions that somehow women, Making up roughly half of the population, and in all their historic intellectual glory, are less intelligent than men, and are always doomed for lower positions in society. But given the era we live in, I found it astounding that this belief is still so widely spread from the multitude of opponents I've had, all of different ages and passports. Thus, I invoked somewhat of an investigation as I looked into why we are so conditioned into believing something evidently wrong. I went through articles and lectures on the imposter syndrome, something especially prevalent in women and women of color. And I go through timelines of minorities begging for crumbs of representation, and I realized the answer has always been my history book right next to me. This is where a question comes to light. Who are we without our history? When women are erased from textbooks and another white man takes their place, why are we surprised our boys grow up not knowing women could also be change makers and young girls unaware of the advancement they may be able to make? When history curriculums in their entirety become unrepresentative of the demographics that exist in a classroom, history in of itself becomes a distant, vague concept. For all those students could care, and for all I could care, history is a fairy tale they'd rather not read. The author seems like they were aiming for a specific audience that is clearly not them. And as a result of all these deficiencies in history curriculums worldwide, as young girls, some of us once were, did not hear about women who defy tradition and norm. Women like scientists, female thinkers, or revolutionaries. They're generally limited to two paths due to this underrepresentation. First, we see that a woman succumbs to these norms. We see this often in rural areas. Women live in silence, or they carry internalized misogyny and uphold the patriarchy by perhaps insulting women who take the step to become something more. And my mind primarily circles back to a specific type of desi auntie that may make your dreams seem unachievable. These women may lean in and whisper to one another, What does she think of herself? The second part we see is that women may dare to be something more, or they may inhibit the belief that women can be something more but they live with some form of imposter syndrome, which is a universal concept that I myself have suffered from for far too long in my life. Essentially, a voice inside your head that tells you, you don't deserve to be here in the first place, and that you should just top your efforts to become something bigger in their entirety. For me, imposter syndrome is a walk on what's supposed to be a sturdy bridge, but something in your head telling you that the next step is impossible, at least for someone like you. And we've already established what the implications are. 
So what is a future where women are taken from footnotes or nothing at all to paragraphs and chapters? What happens when generations of women are taught from the very beginning of their formal education that someone like them was actively a part of sowing the seeds of their nations, of technology and other various progressions? At this point, I would like you to use your imagination. What do you think it would look like when diversity bleeds into previously restricted curriculums, when women stop mass reporting loud enunciations of irresolute ideas, and there aren't girls like me asking? Why are boys so embarrassed to lose to girls? Here's what we can aim for when we rewrite a few words in our history lessons. A world where women are no longer underrepresented in technological positions despite making up tens of millions of individuals in the labor force. Perhaps because we learn how some of the first programmers were women. Our books lived through the lives of Ada Lovelace or Grace Hopper, and we are told going to technology is a viable choice. It is not entirely a boys' club. The same goes for leadership, politics, engineering, and media places where we need women's voices to be heard that are and have been actively showcased as invalid choices for jobs when I was younger through the lack of examples in my history book and the agents of the patriarchy talking down to us for having relevant aspirations. So when our erasure of women in mainstream history has allowed this regressive mindset to continue to rot the brains of our youth, effectively shackling them to doubt themselves or others, and when the answer to fixing our insufficiencies stands so explicitly in front of us, why haven't we just let in the plethora of impactful women into our history textbooks? Let's break the cycle. Thank you.